Okay, I was talking about presentations in the last video um, and uh, kind of went off on a tangent. So I stopped and I'm going to just focus on the presentations part uh, in this second half of the website. So just to return to what we're talking about, if we take a look at, let's see quickly, the course website. Uh, all of my lectures that I've used are here and you can click on them and see the slides that I use. Now I've written all of these slides in R Markdown using Zeringen. Uh, that's this one. And um, let's take a closer look. So um, all of the lecture slides appear in other, the source code is in the presentations folder. Uh, before I talk about the presentations folder, I want to say something a little bit more general. And it has to do with uh, when you compile the website by doing build website, things, it's it, recognizing that things get copied into the docs folder. Okay, and you can um, make use of this functionality. So when we build website, lectures.rmd gets turned into a lectures.html in the docs folder, and so on for these other RMD files. Um, it also turns out that folders get copied into the docs folder. So let's just make a random folder called random. And Let's put something in, in there. Um, okay, I'm going to save this in the random folder as random.html. Yep. Okay, so now we've got, I've just made some stuff. Uh, that is not in the docs folder, but when it recompiled, look, it actually copied it into the docs folder. That's uh, something that's going to happen. Um, so even though I created this folder out here, uh, notice when I saved this HTML file, it kind of, it kind of recompiled the website. Um, and as a part of doing that, it copied this stuff into the folder. So I can actually like, just demonstrate again, it's going to delete this folder. So it's gone, it's not in the docs folder anymore, but it is out here. When I build the website, and go back into the docs folder, it's in there now. So uh, when you have folders in a R Markdown website situation, like this one, and you press build, those folders will get copied into the docs folder. Uh, there's ways to control this behavior, but for now, I'm just relying on the fact that this happens. Um, because what this means is if I create a folder, say, called presentations, and in this folder, I have uh, our markdown files for individual presentations, so we can go find, say, for the first one, 1a intro.rmd. This is a Zeringen uh, slideshow. If I knit this, I can take a look at my slideshow. And uh, when I knit that, what happens is the intro.rmd file is converted into an HTML file right here. Okay. Um, now, I'm r r sort of putting a few links together in my in my head. I'll try to say them out loud. Um, when we inevitably build the website, everything in the presentations folder gets copied into the docs folder. So 
we will see that there's a presentations folder here too with all of the HTML files. Okay, so that means that if I go to the website for Psych 3400, um, I can navigate into these folders. So let's just double check. There's a folder called presentations, presentations. Now, if I just go here, it's going to say 404 not found. However, if I supply the name of a specific HTML file in, in this folder, so let's choose one, one underscore a underscore intro dot HTML, one oh, oh, that auto completes, it will load that up. And I could do that for any of them. So I, there's a B, there's a one B, right? Oh, no, there isn't. <laughs> uh, what's it called? One B data viz. One B data viz is what it's called. Um, one B data viz. There it is. So there's all these uh, presentations on this repository, um, and I know what the links are. Uh, so when I go to build this lectures table, I just am putting those links uh, in here when I refer to, so for example, this is linking to 1A intro, and this one is linking to DataViz and so on. Okay. Um, let's just quickly look at what uh, a Zeringen H, uh, RMD file looks like. Um, there's some YAML at the top where you can give the title, the subtitle, uh, author, and stuff like that. I've gone in and changed some of the CSS myself just to change how it looks. Uh, these files are all right here somewhere. Default, B, CSS, Metropolis, fonts B, and all this stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into editing CSS right now, but basically you can change the look and feel here with those things. Um, when you are making Zwingen slides, every time you add these three dashes, you'll make a new slide. So let's just make um, a new slide at the end. By doing that, I just added three dashes. So when I knit this, I should be able to go all the way to the end and see that there's a new slide there. Yep, there it is. Uh, if you have a single hashtag, whatever you type here will go into the header. Uh, what you type here ooh, will go into the body of that slide. And so you could see just like that. Um, that's basically it. I mean, after this, you get into all the details of Markdown and using R, but a benefit is, you know, let's say you wanted to add some R code. Um, it's like something like this. Uh, it's pretty cool because you can just add um, graphs and things like that generated by R. So here you get like a histogram or whatever. Uh, but you don't it doesn't need to be R code. It could be this is going so these dashes are going to create bulleted lists. Um, you have links to things, just regular text. Uh, what else do we have going on here? This is um, uh, um, oh, what's going on on slide skills you will learn in this course? I think these having two dashes will allow you to, yes, watch like this one, two, allow that kind of functionality. Um, there's, so what's going on right here with class, pink center, middle, clear? Well, these are all 
uh, styles associated with the slides. So this will, uh, let's actually go to the course overview slide and check out what happens. So this will make the presentation of course overview happen centered in the middle. It will be clear in the sense of, I guess the background is white and pink. I, I made this funny uh, transition from teal to pink and you know, you can change that. Uh, but basically there's, in this simple case, there's like two kinds of slide styles. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead and change them to the content that you want to be in there. Um, so I actually made a bunch of changes to this file. This is red telling me if I save it, I will save those changes. I, I don't want to save any of those changes, so I'm just going to close this and say don't save. Um, yeah, there's lots of different presentations in here. You could go and edit, uh, but that's the basic process. Um, knit or oh, you know, load up the Zwingen file, knit it, and then build the website uh, and all of the presentations in this folder will get copied into the docs folder. One little tricky thing here to, to note, um, some because there's this presentations folder is copied in the docs folder, sometimes you can accidentally, like I actually just was, you could be in the docs folder, in the presentations folder there, working on your, say, R markdown document. So let's say I'm in here, I'm working on 1B data viz. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna make some changes here. This is gonna be awesome. So I add a new, add a new thing here. And I'm so happy with my new thing I added. Um, and I knit it and I look at it and I'm like, let's, let's just make sure it's there. Uh, go to the end, sorry it's taking so long. Um, Yeah, th there it is. I made a new slide. I'm so happy with myself. Um, then you maybe make a whole bunch more things, and and then you you know I save these changes and I and I go on, mm -hmm. and then maybe I build a website. Um, what you will find out is that if you're accidentally working inside the presentations folder, uh, you will lose all your changes because they'll get wiped out. Um, so, for example, if I go open this 1B file again, go to the bottom, notice my changes are gone. And why is that? That's because this folder outside of the docs folder was copied into the docs folder. I didn't make the changes in this folder. So the previous state, whatever that, that was, gets overwritten inside the docs folder. So basically, never work inside the docs folder because everything in there is going to get overwritten when you press build website. Uh, I think that's all I have to say in terms of pointing out where the presentations are. Um, I guess I'll, I'll say one more thing. I, I mentioned it in part one, but I realize I should go into this just a little bit more detail. Let's check out the lectures.rmd again here. I'm reading in an Excel spreadsheet in order to populate the table that is right here. And there's a bunch of stuff in this table. We've got links to all these different things. Um, and I just want to so let, let's say you wanted to change all of these links and have them go different places or change the name. And so what would you be having? How would you do that? Well, you would have to go and change this Excel file. And that one is right here, lecture spring 2019.xlsx. So you would, let's just take a look at what's going on. You can, we can view this file in Excel. And you could see, okay, so for the first thing uh, right here, the 
the link is to chapter one. Um, that's right here. Where is this going? Well, it's being defined right here. Um, this is Markdown. If we if we take a look right here, we see uh, left bracket chapter one, right bracket, and then we have got a left parentheses, and we've got the link and a right parentheses. So this is Markdown for um, what, what text will be displayed for the hyperlink and then the link that it, that is going to be linked to. Um, so I want this link to be this one. You know, if, if you, for example, wanted to link to something else, then you'd have to go in here and change this link or change um, this title and so on and so forth for uh, all of these uh, different links. But I just, I just use this as the place where I uh, edit all the links. Um, and should I just do one demonstration? How about I do that right here? I'm going to change this to 